Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have another Halloween card featuring the stamps from Gerda Steiner Designs. She just released these rubber stamps and they are of amazing quality and so adorable just like her typical digital stamp designs but now because they're available in rubber you have some different options of what you can do with them. Particularly you can use watercolor with rubber stamps and that's, um, I've never figured out how to use um, watercolor and digital stamps so I'm very excited about this opportunity to watercolor some of her adorable images and so I'm starting by stamping this focal image in archival jet black ink which is perfect for watercoloring you can stamp in a number of waterproof inks or also do some heat embossing if you want to watercolor um, so I'm going to stamp him in kind of to the right of the card because I want him to be the focal image and I know that the sentiment is going to go in the top left over there and so I'm going to be creating a whole kind of nighttime scene around him. For my watercoloring today I'm going to be using ink tense pencils. I really love ink tense pencils because they have really vibrant color and I want to even though I'm creating a night scene for him to be really fun and cute and so I think that using bright colors like this bright green will kind of really lend to that effect. And so when I use ink tense pencils, I simply color on um, kind of a messy coloring in the area that I want the color to be. So every area that I want green, I've kind of messily colored in with the colored pencils. There are some things to consider with ink tense pencils and I've mentioned these before when I've used them. Ink tense pencils are more inky, which is what leads to their um, intense color. But because of that, they don't um, blend out the way that watercolor pencils will. Watercolor pencils with enough water can basically be erased. That's not true with ink tense pencils. They um, are more, like once they're dry, they're dry and that's it. And you really are not going to be able to get them out and you're not going to be able to do too much blending once they're dry. And so it's more important that you work quickly with them and when you want to do blending to kind of blend when you do the pencil step as opposed to when you're adding the water because it's a little bit harder to get a blend there. And so I'm going to add purple dots to him because I think that green and purple present a nice contrast. I didn't want to do too much purple though because I know that with creating a night sky I'm going to be using purple in the night sky. And so I just want kind of some touches of purple. And then the next um, complement that would make sense is the orange. So you see that I've added some orange in his horns and in um, some other details on the stamp. Now, I want to color in his skin, but with Ink Tense Pencils, the set that I have, the 24 set, your skin color range is pretty limited. And so I'm gonna actually switch over to um, a distress marker for this. I'm using the Antique Linen Distress Marker, and I'm going to just add it where I want it to be the darkest, which would be under the hood and um, around to the right on this image and so I'm just going to kind of color that on and then I will spread it out with the brush. You see that I'm using a water brush that has a barrel in it but I don't actually put water in the barrel I just spray my water with a mister onto my Ranger craft sheet. I love the Ranger craft sheet because you can just spray right on it, add everything to it and it wipes away. Mine does look a little grungy and that does happen over time but I just think it's so much nicer than having to have like little barrels of water and stuff. So now I want to start adding the night sky. I'm using Distress Ink for the night sky. I'm starting with Seedless Preserves, but I'll also be using Dusty Concord and Black Soot. And I, I had tried to do this in the past by painting everything on. So first I would like tap it onto my craft sheet and then tried to paint all the color on. But that took a really long time. And so I thought, what if I just add the distress ink right to the watercolor paper. So today I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper, 140 pound, really thick stuff. And so I want to just add the ink right to the watercolor paper this time. And so what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing it on and I'm going to start with the seedless preserves and then I'm going to move on to the dusty concord. I want to make sure that there's a highlight around him so the lightest color is going to go next to him and I'm even leaving a little bit of a halo around him but I will kind of fill that in later and so I'm going to be fading from the light seedless preserves to the slightly darker dusty concord and finally to the black soot and it will all be blended out in the end this is just me kind of laying the color on and I'm using the mini distress ink blending tool for this. Um, the Distress ink does get all over your fingers and can spread around, so it is good to kind of clean up in between steps. I'm going to go back with my water, crush, water brush and start 
blending out this color now. The first thing that I want to do is pull the color right up to the stamped image. But because I'm pulling the color in, it's going to be lighter, which is exactly what I want because I do want there to be a highlight around him and him to be the real focus of the card. So again, I have the water brush. Um, any brush would do as long as it works well with watercolor for you. And I do suggest that you use a detailed brush when you're kind of going close to images like this. And so what I'm doing is dipping it in the water and then I'm pulling the color. When I notice that the color is a little lighter than I want, I'm just going to take the brush and kind of dip it into the darker colors or the little more concentrated ink areas of the panel and pull that color in. Distress ink reacts more similar to watercolor in the sense that when you add water, you can always um, get more ink out of it. It doesn't dry permanent like the Inktense pencils. And so with distress inks, you do have to be a little more careful. Like you've used distress ink on an envelope and then it rained when it was being delivered, it would spread everywhere. So that's something to keep in mind with watercolors and distress inks. Um, but generally, that's an awesome property and lets you do some really cool effects with distress inks. And so when I move away from the detail part, I'm going to be using that wider water brush, which is actually the Tim Holtz wide flat water brush, and using that to kind of spread the color around throughout the rest of the image just to kind of blend things a little bit, although the blending foam did do a lot of blending for me. So now I want to add some grass, and I had that Lawn Fawn um, Lawn Cuts Grassy Borders die, and I just want to um, add my own custom color to it with the peeled paint Distress Ink. I'm just dabbing it on like I had done previously with the um, night sky panel and I want it to be kind of dark and so I'm just kind of uh, putting a little on, spreading it out with the water brush and cleaning everything up and then I will be using some matte accents to glue it on because this is a thick paper I want to make sure that I use a really strong adhesive. Matte accents and also glossy accents from Ranger are really strong adhesives and work well for thick materials like this watercolor paper. So I'm just kind of centering it on the way I like it and trimming off the edges. And then I'm ready to finish off the card now that I have the main um, part done. I'm adding a little orange border for to add that pop and to pull in the orange from the monster. Then I want to create a little banner for my sentiment, but I want the colors to match and coordinate. So I'm using the Inktense pencils again, and I want to use the same green that I used in his costume. So I just scribbled a little bit of that on and created my own little piece of um, pat, uh, solid colored paper that matches. And then he was using watercolor paper again there. So I'm just going to cut out the banners and the sentiment is from the Mama Elephant stamp set. I um, can't remember. It has all the little Halloween characters. And I just really love this sentiment. You're bootastic. It's so fun. This will make a great card for kids. So I'm just placing that sentiment on with some foam, foam dots or so I foam tape from Scotch, the really thin stuff, so that this card stays nice and flat since everything so far is flat on the card. And um, I put it on a black card base. Then I'm going to be just adding some stars for the night sky. These are just some simple star sequins that I picked up at a local craft store and a you know big old bag you see up there. And so I'm just going to be using the matte accents again and my quick sticks tool to pull them on. I may have gone a little overboard, but I really do like the sparkle and shine. I think it adds something nice to this card. And um, I've done a card with this effect in the past, and um, it was really well received by the recipient. So I just kind of wanted to try that out again. And so basically, that's going to be it for my card today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more in my series, including the rest of these images from Gerda Steiner Designs, please subscribe to my channel to check out those other Halloween videos. I'm going to list some of the products in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.